Just to make things confusing. <laughs> The point is ventilation. The point is ventilation. The point is ventilation. One way or another. Starting off with with your bees, that's your first box. What I also do is I st is I staple like I did to these two pieces. I staple the screen to the to the initial deep. Nothing up here gets stapled, but okay, that way I can here. right. But that way I can pick it up and move it. I've also found that when I've been hit, hit by bears, every time I've got staples, they don't get in. I had one incident where the person didn't have staples in his box. The bear knocked it over and had the straps on it, and the bear was able to stick its claw in the front and the lid and rip the bottom off. But every one of these tried where it's got staples, there's enough strength here to here that he couldn't pull it off. If you put a horizontal strip on here, they'll build down and fill in the, the, the frame. But then people would go and stick another deep on top with a horizontal strip up here. And the girls would not go up and break communication up to here and come down. They did this. They, they went wherever they wanted and it was beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, and it was structurally perfection. But we couldn't pull the frames out without ripping it to shreds. So the reason I've changed my teaching on that is because then nobody can forget everything vertical. <laughs> then I don't have to worry about. And when you do the vertical, they do exactly this. They start at the bottom, and then they build up. And on a small frame, it's not that much of an issue. Yes, you could put a, a horizontal strip because you're not breaking the space too much. But just in general, so that nobody forgets, I do vertical strip in all of my frames so the girls can have a place to start at the bottom and go up and out. Before I get to the hive, per se, let's talk about the bees, per se. The bees are a being that lives in darkness. We are addicted to light. Just because we have eyes, we think we know light. We think that because we see things, we know what light is. But light, we don't see light. We just see light reflected on objects. In space, there is light and it's total darkness. There is black over there in outer space. But there is light. But we think because we see something, oh, that is light. But that's, that is not the case. Light is something that the bees are a light being. They live inside the, the hive in total darkness. Darkness, according to the, the standards of the scientific process, there is light inside the hive. But it's a light that we cannot see with our physical eyes, per se. Pleasant and nice, you know, the sweetness of the honey, fragrant wax, propolis has a nice vanilla scent to it. Foul brood really kind of smells bad. This is a frame of foul glue that's wrapped in plastic, so please don't break open the plastic. But you can pass this around to get an idea of what it smells like. It's not real pleasant. Don't sit my here. <laughs> Try to memorize that smell. That's another sign. Um, usually though, and it's, the stronger it smell is in its later stages. In its later stages, the, the brood that is mucousy and moist starts to dry up and it turns into what we call scales. These black scales that adhere to the bottom side of the cell and just kind of dries up and, and, and sticks to the cell and get these like black scales basically um, that are very, very hard to remove even for the bees. Um, and this is one of the reasons why I strongly discourage anyone from purchasing or accepting as a gift any used combs from anybody. Right. Because you don't know if it's got this disease in it. You know, I mean, even if you don't see the signs of it with the scales, it could be there. I like to, you know, to me, smoke is your, my primary protection. And I use it to, to cover up the scent and the smell of, of the bees. Because um, the workers at the, the entrance, if they get agitated or upset, they're going to give off a pheromone. It tells the other bees there's a problem out here, and that's how you know they're able to coordinate and chase off predators many times their size because they all work together. Um, so we can cover up that scent by you blow some smoke in there, and it, and it throws them off. You know, and it covers up the smell. Then you can go and start um, doing working with the hive because as soon as you touch the hive, you're going to feel the vibrations. Well, they don't really hear it, but they feel vibration. 
and that's what sound is, vibration. So just are all black. Mushrooms are gray. And then the hive in the middle, that we're all blocking the path. Take a look at the cloud behind us, because we blocked their flight path. <laughs> uh -oh. Step aside. They're going to get mad. They won't get mad. They'll hold the holding even. pattern. <laughs> step, here we go. Come on back, girls. Good girl. Come on in. You back up a tad more. They see you're white. Good. Now you can come in, kids. <laughs> see that? Oh, I need to tell you, but now we're in front of the other hive. <laughs> Um, but now, anyway, the center hive here, see how every single one of them is orange? Okay, Italians. Here we have a mixture. Cosmic. They know she's not true, and they will make a true queen. Even if the one they're replacing does all the functions that you see is that's what they're supposed to do. Um, there's a lot more, you know, connected than just what we have you know, in the books, and I was very happy to have Luis do his talk this morning because it's it goes beyond the numbers we write on paper. <laughs> Again, what I do when I go into my hives is I just tell them that I'm here. I don't smoke, smoke, smoke. I don't smoke to uh, you know take away my scent of fear, uh -huh. but I do smoke them just to. But yeah, drones are. It's, again, it happens quite often. You think you see a queen because it's just so big, but it is. I don't have the sun macro. I don't know if I can do macro well. Yeah. This is a very, very strong congregation of Russians. I'll tell Jack because Yeah, ASAP. Yeah. It's full of honey, and look underneath. If that is full of honey as well, I'll take the top that top box and harvest it. And I'll keep looking underneath until I see brood. When I see brood, that's the top of the brood nest, I leave that top box full of honey. So I know there's a full box of honey going into winter. Um, and that's the way I like to do it myself. And that's also why I use a management system that utilizes a deep box sandwiched between two or more shallow supers. That's my management style. Um, so inner cover, screen, screen, screen and shallower super full of straw, yeah. another inner cover, Reflectix, uh, outer two, cover, two and I'm good and I'm tight, I'm wicking up the moisture, I'm keeping a good R value. You have holes cut in both inner covers? No, just the top. Okay. Now remember there's always more than one way to do it. Yeah, things. there's other ways to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I just if you have a piece of insulating material, one inch glue board or something, just cut it to the size of the inner cover, put it under there, you're done. Much easier. Remember, I'm the lazy guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have an issue with moisture that you wish it was quick though. No. Um, as oh, you've got the I leave got plenty the of ventilation. That's the thing I do. I don't close my bottom board screens. They're open to the ground.